Sydney, Australia, the sparkling backdrop and host nation to the FIBA 2022 World Cup. You're looking and getting set for Japan versus Mali here inside the Kudos Bank Arena, better known as the Superdome. We're shaking it up as number 37, Mali, gets to take on number eight, Japan, the reigning silver medalist from the Tokyo Olympics. Welcome inside. I'm Despina Barton, joined by Lori Chizik, the former Australian assistant coach. Lori, these two teams, and especially for Mali, only making their second World Cup appearance. What can we expect? What do we know? Well, I'll tell you one thing. It is like David and Goliath out there. Most people would have Japan marked as a win already. And certainly on paper, it looks like they have the ascendancy in all sorts of areas. Rebounding, scores, speed, athleticism, experience. But for Mali, you know what? They are not going to back down. They are a hustle team. They're physical. They're aggressive. They love the fact that they are here and they will give it their best shot. And they want to be here. You should see the energy they had just jumping around all the media events. And certainly Japan come in with a target on their back because, yes, they are those silver medalist team. They are the Asia 2021 Cup champions. And they return a heavy roster. But one thing is worth noting. They are missing Saki Hayayashi, who was the sharpshooter who provided a lot of scoring power, the engine behind Japan's offensive performance. But don't sleep. I will tell you this, Lori. When I have watched Japan, I, I sit back, I'm mesmerized at just aesthetically how clinical they are. This team, to me, uh, is going to be a team that we'll see to the very end. Well, their trademark is that, that they play very clean basketball. Their passes are crisp. They run the floor. We'll talk more about them as, as things progress, but they're a fun group to watch. And there's just so much basketball to be played here in Sydney. We are in the Olympic Park, and this is just the second game here inside the Superdome. There has been a full slate of basketball. We have a neighboring arena about a quarter mile away from us. We will get set here with all those rich traditions that come with representing your country at the highest level here, at the international level with here in the FIBA World Cup. Japan and Mali just minutes away from a tip. But before we jump into this action, we're gonna show you how the results, or excuse me, the schedule looks like here the rest of the day. Australia, that premier primetime game against France. There will be an opening ceremony before then as well. And here are some of those results. Puerto Rico, USA on the winning end, and then Korea and China will go toe-to-toe -to -toe here. 5.30 p.m. local time. I have no doubt that that stadium will be filled to the rafters tonight for that um, Australian game versus France. The national anthem. Oh, and a lot of fans here as we get set for the national anthem and flag presentation.
What a powerful moment there. You have to be in this moment as an athlete. Uh, Lori, talk to me about what this means, making this exchange, something that hasn't been done in two years, wearing your country on your chest. What's this like? Well, I think any time you stand and you listen to your national anthem, it's a very proud, spine-tingling moment. And then to exchange gifts with your opponents is really special. It's, it's something that you, you, know, you don't take for granted ever. And both these teams would be really um, proud to be out there and excited to be out there as well. Lots of pride and a lot of opportunity here to showcase what you've been working on for so long. This is the starting five for Mali. You see Kuruma, Gandega, and you want to key in on number 14 there, Sika Kone. She will be the star of the show for this hungry Mali team. And they are led by Jacqueline Brizuela. Yeah, she is absolutely their main player. She's active on offense, a great, great offensive rebounder. Um, and she's not afraid of anybody. And she is only 20 years old. Youth on her side, but they're going up against a juggernaut squad in Japan. Look at the starting crew. Takata is their captain. Yamamoto, Toto, and then you got a lot of post-game presence from Akaho and Okoye. This team is potent. Well, the one... If I could sum up Japan, this is what I would say. They run the floor, they spread the floor, they attack the paint, and they knock down open threes and deep threes. So they've got a little bit of everything. And I'm so excited to see them play because they play a brand of basketball that not many other countries can match in their speed and, and what they bring. And the Japan team is led by Toru Asuka. And we are just a minute away from tip off. The other player, um, Despina, that Japan is missing that's pretty key, as she certainly was in the Olympics, is the point guard, Mashita. She played with Washington in the WNBA, and she just hasn't had much of a break and, and was just too physically tired to, to make this commitment. But she averaged 12 assists at the Olympics, so she was a real facilitator to get her teammates open. You see Molly making their second ever appearance in the FIBA World Cup. Japan, their 14th World Cup appearance. But get this, Lori, Japan has never won their debut game of the tournament. In fact, excuse me, not never. The last time they did was 1979. Wow, that's a little stat that's very interesting. So they'll be really keen to, to start off strongly and, and to get this first win. And they will not be taking Molly lightly. You have to respect everybody. Respect your opponent, fear no one. And it's go time. These teams have been here for a couple of days, if not longer, getting acclimated to the time change. There's coach Toru Asuka. He took over the team in the fall of 2021 after Tom Hobas took a job with the men's national team for Japan. And he, he hasn't missed a step, I'll tell you that. He hasn't, and he was a longtime assistant. So he was with the program. He knows the players. He knows the systems. And um, so he's very ably stepped into the head coach role. And before we do get this game started, we're going to take a moment of silence. We'll take a moment as a mark of respect to honor the life of Queen Elizabeth II and her passing. And let's get set for jump ball. You're looking at Ballara for Mali and Takata, the captain for Japan, squaring up. Time to rock it. Mali gets the tip ball. Tripped up. Owing the other way, Yamamoto with the steal. 
Okoye backing down. Molly draws. No, it's called a travel, so a turnover on Japan's first possession. The two trade a, a turnover to open this contest up. Haruma with the rock. Double team, here it comes. Can she split them? Molly recovers. Shot goes up. Gendega, no. And I'm sure Japan's going to look to full court press the ball handlers of Molly just to test how they can go against that sort of full court pressure. Open look is given up the pass. Better to Akaho. Beautiful take underneath the basket. And great court vision on that pass. Same, same action at the other end. Just a little loss of vision by the Japanese team and a nice score by Molly. Back at you. This time Yamamoto lets it rip. It's off. Rebound. Kone. We're moving with speed all alone. She wins out the point. And that's Gendiga. the sort of game that Molly wants to play. They want to get out in transition. They don't want to grind it out in the quarter court. They want to just get out and run and try and score early in the shot clock. Yamamoto again, a miss. Look at that, three green jerseys boxing out, making sure that's a one possession stop. Kone goes baseline, spin, takes, shoulder squares up, it's off. Great defense there by Okoye. Akaho goes right, tightly guarded. Bali, the feed to Kone. And a foul on the block. Tell you what, Molly is not taking a backward step as we mentioned straight away. They're looking like they're being the aggressors right now. They have nothing to lose. They are here because Nigeria should be here and because of political reasons in their country weren't able to make the trip and so molly got selected to come here and you know they are happy to be here but don't just want to be a number they want to really try and put some pressure on some teams akaho tripped up in her dribbling get it back to the true point guard outside shot by okoye let's see money monica okoye with the first three ball that looks so nice. Her feet were set, eyes on the target, caught and shot, straight away a three. Gendaiga with the ball, calling the play. Vita Kuruma, turn, shoot. It's off. The rebound, though, is not. Kone going to work. The high, low, really tight. Can they pull it out? No. But they get a pair of free throws and can make up for it. Japan just look a little nervous to me right now to start this game. They don't look like they're at ease with what they're doing. And in fact, neither does the coach think they are. They've just made a almost a lineup, like a, change. A lineup change. This is what they do in American hockey, by the way. It's That's right. A hot change as Miyazawa comes on, as does Tukashke. And Maoli. I guess that beats burning a timeout this early. Yeah. Just three minutes in, and it's a one point game. Shot goes down the second, at least, for Kuruma. Miyazawa with the rock for Japan. Short ball off the leg of Gendega. They pick it up. Stays Molly's. Kone going to work off the block. Double team comes. She sticks with it. Shot from Gendega. Off. Kone, the last one to touch it. And as we mentioned, we're going to see Kone in a lot of action. She recognized the ball went inside to where she, everybody collapsed. She kicked it out to her teammate and then was in there for the O boards. Takashke around the horn. Stephanie Mowley here goes left, finds a lane. 
They didn't like her. Possession sticks with Japan. Oh, good hands on defense, nearly deflected. Harashita holds on, shoots it from the free throw line. No, it's a miss. Mali fighting for the board. Scan by Mali. Karumba takes it out of the three point line. She wants that extra point. Kone in the paint. Keep it going. Yes. Kone with the payoff. A little step back three, and while she missed it, Kone was there to sweep up the old boards and finish. I gotta love that. Unconventional, fun. Well, that's what I think of Molly. They're a little bit unorthodox in what they do. Sometimes it looks chaotic out there, but they'll never stop trying hard. There we see a three-point shot from Hirashita. And that's automatic. She had, that was a set piece for Hirashita. Idera over to Kurumba on the floor. Officials checking the call. You have to remember too, Molly, they haven't had a lot of time together because they didn't know that they were coming to this tournament until very late, till Nigeria pulled out. So, you know, they've put this team together and uh, come over here and um, any time they can step on the floor with this elite level of basketball is a great learning experience for all of them. Kone drawing two, she'll still try to get up <laughs> her own rebound. No shot. They're going to call a traveling instead. Kone, by the way, on a U19 team that finished fourth in the 21 World Cup, she led all scorers, averaging 19.7 points. She's so athletic, Kone. On the curl here, Hirashita. Fly, baby, fly. Six points early for Harashita. That's the thing about this Japanese team, that if you leave them open at all, if you give them any space, they're going to hurt you from that three-point line. And Dagog takes it right. She had the lane. And fighting for that pass intended from Mauli. Molly making things real difficult. Pesky. Pesky, yes. <laughs> we see Miyazaki up full court. Trying to slow down Gandega. Going the left this time. This one works. The lefty goes down for Gandega. Great throw down by Gandega and then nice drive and finish to the basket. Miyazaki calling for some help. That pass intercepted. Too hot to handle. He Haidara was there for it. Japan with just a two-point lead here, six minutes in. You're watching Group B play in the FIBA Women's World Cup. It's day number one. Miyazaki from nearly half court. A miss sitting there waiting the Hirashita. Eight points, excuse me. Yes, Hirashita. Pressure comes, ball gets loose, Harashita picks it up. And that's where Molly will struggle a little bit. It's just the experience of their ball handlers under that immense pressure, but wasn't that a great fast? And then a finish from Tokashki. A little give and go action. It all started from Miyazaki. Down the lane, a little reckless, but it goes. Hidara. Opportunity to make it a three-point play. Now you have to appreciate who she just drove on and what she had all the confidence to do. She was up against the very experienced 
Takashki and uh, didn't look backwards at all. Nothing to lose, Lori. That's what you said yes. in this open. When this game started. And there's not a lot of tape on Molly. How do you even begin your preparation? Well, and that's it. And they, as I said, they don't necessarily run a lot of set plays. It sort of looks chaotic sometimes. They have some actions out there. But they'd be very difficult to scout. Oh, oh. Get out of here, Karuma says. Wow, could you imagine? Moali, Mo Mo Maoli, excuse me. Turn around, jumper. Wow, made it look so easy. I was just going to say that exact thing. That was very casual in what she did, but a great finish. I think she can do that shot in her sleep for how many shots she's taking. Harashita, the hot hand! It continues! And that is classic Japanese basketball. Get out and run. Plant yourself at the three-point line, and off you go to the races. Doesn't even hesitate on that shot. 11 points. Good energy coming from that timeout. I wish we could I wish we could interpret what the coach says, but I think he'd be happy in their output and, and what they're doing and what they're trying to do. They're actually taking care of the ball not too badly. They only have three turnovers. If I look at the stats, so Japan right now already shooting four from eight from the three-point line, 50%. And so out of the timeout, we see full court defense pickup from Japan. They are out in front by eight. Kone keeps the ball moving around the horn. Shot clock at seven. Turn and shoot. Won't go for Dembele. Japanese are on the run. Okoe takes a baseline and is stopped. Koye uses her body so well, her strength. But even better defense that time by Mali. Idara going at Okoye. Kiss off the glass, it goes! Who needs offense when you can just go one-on-one? -on -one? All right, an eye for an eye. No, a miss by Okoye. And we're rolling with Enjai. Japan sets things up. Shot goes up by Yoshida. A miss. Feed up to Enjai. And a foul called against Yasama. That move, beautiful. You're right, her body composure, Lori? Yeah. And then the finish there at the other end. Few coachable moments here in the first minutes of play. About 90 ticks left in the first quarter. And the first one is willed down. Yemba, Njai, two for two. If you can keep converting, we might have a close one. Yoshida, 
And last touch by Japan. Picks up her dribble. What a win for Karuma. Substitutions for Mali. I actually like the way Mali are playing some defense. The last time I watched them, I didn't think they had that many sort of rules or principles in place, but I'm seeing some different things out there when, and they're really talking up and communicating with each other. And Jai with the rock. Kulibeli. Off the curl, and Jai finds the lane. It's working. Molly keeping this game tight now within two. Kasama gives it up to Okoye. Ball down, gets stripped. Her teammate will pick it up, but throws it at the feet of Yoshida. Japan, a little helter-skelter. Well, that was just a little bit of um, really active hands on Molly's part. Kone getting her hand in there for the deflection, then going off the Japanese player. And that's the way they like to play. We said that unorthodox, just up and in, won't back down. Hustle team, physical, aggressive. Thirty seconds pulls the trigger, a miss by Tiwara, and will slow things down with Yasama. Lanes open up. Everyone clears the right side. Akaho goes left. The foul. Akaho will get to the free throw line. She's one of the four. Olympic silverist, silver medalist on this squad. These are the first free throws that Japan has taken. Akaho, the workhorse of this roster. Underrated, but a key rebounder and just knows how to create for her team. Njai pulls it from midcourt. One second to go, she follows her rebound. No! It won't go, but what a performance here in the first quarter. Japan still out in front, but this time only by three. Japan, 21, Mali, 18. And Japan right now, they're going to just have to settle into their game. I don't feel like they're playing the Japanese style of game, which is to run, to push, to move the ball quickly. It seems like they're just sort of a little bit nervous or aren't sure what Mali's doing or what Mali's bringing. Uh, so they just have to settle into their style of game. We know how well they can play. We know how well they can move the ball and shoot the ball. And I have no doubt that that will kick in uh, maybe next quarter, but certainly at some point in this game. And even I got some coaches' notes from Toru Asuka. He shared that, you know, the key to this game will be uh, certainly on offensive defense, but stopping the power and speed that Molly has. He said that they got to stop him in fast break. And he knew going into this game that they have strong ball control. Well, the other thing I, I thought for um, Japan was that they want to push the ball to test Molly's defensive transition. Can Molly match up to their speed and their quickness? Um, quick movement in the quarter court to put Molly into rotations to see what their rules are. But as I said, I've been impressed with Molly. I, I think they've brought some different looks to today's game. And after the 10, first 10 minutes of action, it's just a three point ball game. Big thank you to TCO Fan Camp getting loud. There's our boys, little champions. Here, Ashta leads all scorers at uh, 11 Six points that quarter. Let's see who's out there. Who's supporting Mali? And make some noise if you're supporting Japan. 
Lots of fans in here in the Superdome. We're at the Olympic Park. If you're just joining us, I'm Despina Barton, joined by Lori Chizik. And you're looking at Japan, Mali, and Toto from three, nothing but net. You could tell when that left her hand, that was looking good. Beautiful. Nanako Toto, a rising star on this roster for Japan. Just 21 years old. And Jai creates some space. Open look by Cooley Belly. Hey, Four, three. Akaho. Then we see Miyazawa. Her shot is no good. Ball on the ground. We're going to have a jump ball, and this is going to go Molly's way. And that's a jump ball. Molly, possession. There was never any doubt that Kula Belly was going to shoot that ball. A nice little punch in and kick out to her teammate. Kula Belly ready to shoot it. Jean, the feed to Kone, a miss. She gets her own board. That's the story down there. Three white jerseys crashing. She is an offensive rebounding monster. Toto behind the back. Cross court pass to Miyazawa. Open look by Akaho. She knows what to do. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Ball movement. Shift them around. Good defense there. Forced to turn over at the center line. Over and back call. But Japan on that last play phase moved the ball around. Passed it crisply like we know they can do. And then left open a, a wide open shot. Yamamoto, again, from an NBA range three. Who's there to rebound? You guessed it, Kone, the feed up. We're moving with Njai. Yamamoto, Miyazawa, a miss. Last touched by Toto. Kulibeli to inbound for the women from Mali. I love the jerseys, by the way. And two, we're at the, the, we get to stay where the players stay, so you get to see the fashion too, yes. and the shoe game, and I mean, technically we're all roommates over the next two weeks here for the FIBA World Cup, oh, and those two first points here, Kone. Dembele just driving it in, had great vision to be able to make that little dump pass to her teammate. Kone with six here today. Six points, seven rebounds. Another trip to the free throw line here for Stephanie Mowley. The 23-year-old power forward misses. Her coach watching on. Misses both, but it looks like there might be a lane violation. Somebody must have gone in just a little bit too early. See if she can make. Third time lucky. <laughs> we say third time the charm in the States. <laughs> oh, no, ball does not lie. Maybe she'll make it up here. She does. The two, the easy way for Mowley. What an explosive first step Mowley had to get by her defender. 
And Jai scanning. Cooley Belly, skip pass. Then Belly. It's off. We have entanglements under the basket going against Mali. Foul was on Kone. Her second personal foul, but well, maybe the coach will be making a substitution here. I think you have to with seven minutes to go in this quarter. She's such an important piece, and so it's a long game still. They need her on the court. They can't have her fouling out. Maui off the curl, gets some contact to the face. Nice little pat there. No Just basketball going on here. That's her first. Substitutions for both Japan and Mali. So, of course, Kone stepped off during that substitution period. We got Haidara taking the rock up. Dembele in the corner. Shot up, Tirara. It's off. Rebound though, Haidara. No. How about Kuli Belly? Ball goes up. She keeps it high. A lot of opportunities there. They're fighting hard for their old boards. They're going after every single shot out there. They just can't do the putbacks. Can't seem to make it. Full court defense. We see it. Pick up by Molly. Mizaki. Molly. Bit of a mismatch here. She goes right at Haidara and wins out. Very crafty move by Wawali. Just a nice little spin. Re re relied on her quickness, her foot speed to make that move. Haidara. Dembele Ooh. takes it on the right. Wow, spin and dumps. That's a beautiful. That was a great move by Dembele. Miyazaki, free throw line, takes it herself. She called bank. I know it's a national holiday today, but the banks are open. I um, I liked her pull-up jumper there. That was a good decision. Not sure if she called bank, but uh, we'll let it go. Things are moving too quickly, <laughs> Lori. <laughs> nice hands. Pick up by Miyazawa. Hirashita gives it back. Japan resets. Hirashita, right wing this time, and... Same, same result. Harashita now with 14, leading all scorers on the floor. She looks very comfortable in what she's doing out there. Her shot, her preparation. Dembele, deep ball. No. Japan recovers. And we're going to have a foul in the middle of the court going against Mali. It's going against Tuti Gandega. She put her hand up straight away that she had fouled, so they knew, she knew. Such honesty here at this level. Well, I'm not sure about that all the time, Despina. <laughs> it's choice positions, right? As another three ball drops this time on the hands of Maki Takata. I think more often you're not, you see players going, what, me foul? No way. Football pass, too much. Haidara, that pass was intended for Dembele. And that's a timeout to Mali. And so we're gonna have a timeout called here by Mali. They need to talk about how to uh, 
get by this full court pressure, set up some sort of press break so they're not relying on that long pass that went flying out of bounds. They need to be able to, you know, either through dribble or pass, get that ball off the floor. Japan outscoring Mali. They're in the second quarter so far, 18 to 7. And we can see that three-point range. And for Japan right now, they're still at 50%, eight from 16. So we know that's their game. We know how great three-point shooters they are. The got a stat line there, three points, two boards. And she's only played a couple of minutes. I mean, heck, everyone contributing for Japan. High low. Toto gets tripped up and stripped. So we'll move ahead. Gandega. Spin off her balance. Nine seconds to play with on the shot clock. Got to get a shot up. Turn and look open. Gandega takes a couple steps. We'll drive in. The shot will not count. All that effort, Lori. Oh, they just needed a little bit more shot clock awareness and uh, to put your teammate, to make it that extra pass and put your teammate under that pressure. The lead pushed out to 14 for Japan. They come in as the eight, the number eight team in the FIBA World Rankings. Wow, and now everybody is hitting Nanako Toto. That was a great shot from Toto because she had the defender's hand right in her face. Tipped away, Miyazaki alone. She'll take it herself, easy money. Just quick hands, picking the pocket, nice easy layup. Dembele full speed ahead, just coming at you. Tirara draws the contact. Tirara will step to the free throw line. She's the six foot one, 36 year old as a we have a lineup change from Japan. <laughs> a few smiles here for the team as they get a breather. Miyazaki deserves that break. I must say, I always look over at the coach of Japan, Tora, and think he looks so relaxed. Often has a smile on his face but he'd be happy with what his charges have come out with in this second quarter, now up by 18 points. Tiara will get the two. No free pass, the defense stays up court. And the foul, the reach in from Gandega. Oh, excuse me. They're going to call it offensive against Yasama. Yes, I think she was getting hassled there and just got maybe a little bit of frustration and, and lifted that arm bar up to try and fend away the defender. And Lori, explain at what point can you have your arm out and then when is it a foul? How high are we going? Well, as soon as you extend it away from your body, then that's considered that you're trying to create space for yourself. No touch on that ball, so it's going to stay with Japan. And that's something that um, we see from 
uh, Tokashigiki is that she made great, she ran point to rim to rim, made great position there and held on to it, was demanding the ball, just quite didn't execute the pass. Osama. Waters parting, skip pass over to Yoshida. Creates on her own, falling. Rebound, Mali. Nice block out by Tarara. Under two to play in the first half. Gandega. Head down, spinning, take to the basket, Tarara. Yes! And a timeout is cold. And that's a timeout to Japan. Even when Coach Asuka delivers a message from the timeout, it is with a smile. Like, they're having, I mean, this is a game at the end of the day, right? We all get to be around a sport that brings joy and passion uh, to the forefront. Uh, and I, I love that demeanor about him. Look at him. Doesn't it make you want to smile more? I I, that's what I was saying every single time I see him. Having said that, Japan is one of the most disciplined teams um, that you will see as far as what they run, how they run. And, and so obviously he has to be also be a taskmaster, but a nice one. Yes, I'm calling the play. Maoli trying to set that screen. Should go left instead. Maoli, wing shot, good for three. Nine seconds on the shot clock, spinning in the middle of nowhere. This one, oh, back and forth. Shot just forced up there by Tarara. It's difficult if we saw that play phase. The players were really just trying to go one-on-one -on -one and, and Japan are good defenders. They can stay, they've got good foot speed. They can keep their player in front. So it's pretty hard to get a shot off that way. Under a minute to play, second quarter. Group B opening day here at the FIBA World Cup Championship Tournament. Hook shot, no good for Akaho. Another look, let's see what she does. Finger roll, no, a miss. Her teammate coming through, sliding all over the place. She will go out of bounds, Yasama. That was a good second effort by Akaho. Just wasn't able to finish off. A little up the court by committee for Mali. Karuma, the feed to Tarara. Spin move baseline. That's like a favorite here. This one not going down for Dembele. Final 17. Japan will call the final play. Yosama to Maoli. Gives it back. She'll take the last jumper, is off. But she knew it was hers to take. After 20 minutes of action, it is Japan up 47-29.
First quarter, really close. What separated the Japanese here in the final 10 minutes? I think that coming into that second quarter, they had just settled into the pace of the game more. I thought they pushed the ball. They got some easier transition baskets. Good ball movement, good player movement in that second quarter. Forced Mali into some rotations, which makes it difficult. And then they found some easy baskets. And of course, they got some easy ones on a full court pressure uh, where they're able to get some steals and finish off. And now we have them up by 18 points. I look here at those leading scores after the first 20 minutes. I love it. The tumble camera here. We're having some fun. Japan doing a good job on Kone, keeping her to only six points because she is their main scorer. She's their main rebounder. And she's been relatively quiet for her in a game like this. Well, I guess it doesn't help, too, that she's got two early fouls. Well, she absolutely sat for a little while out there. Um, and she'll need to come back out in the uh, third quarter and really put the pressure on, on Japan and, and show what she can do, show what she's capable of doing. She's a great player and is the star of this Mali team. Mali, though, going full speed all the way at you. And Japan found a way to respond here in the second quarter. And then it actually ended up Mali, excuse me, Japan outscoring Mali 26 to 11. So a 15 point differential and a lot of weapons. What a feed down low, the finish by Kone. That's what I like about this, this, this Mali team. They, they're, they're not giving up, they're, they're going at it. They're, they're playing as hard as they can. Japan is a highly skilled team. And I love the fact that Molly, that spin move, we've seen that before. Gotta love that in slow motion. The thing about the spin move is get your eyes on the target early and you could see that was exactly the case for Dembele. And Japan, we know this is what they do well, right? They shoot incredibly well from the three. Well, considering they're at 53% from the three-point line, we know that's the game, but nice little pick the pocket there from Miyazaki. She likes it. She's a little bit tired right now, but uh, she likes what's going on out there. Well, and don't worry, Lori. That's why it's halftime. Everyone taking a breather except the entertainment on the court. Stick around. We'll be right back with third quarter action right now at the half. It is Japan 47, Mali 29. Who will you become when the moment arrives and you're carrying the expectations of an entire nation, representing your people and their dreams, the colorful faces in the streets, the screaming fans in the stands? It's time to make your move. All eyes on you, all hope, all heart. Because when you win, you win for all. chance to run numbers down the floor for the Japanese Takadas presents the early screen they take the pull up the two is good and Fujioko great decision saw the gap separated from the screen and knocked it down Kibarao tries to answer for Belgium see if uh, Dembe can get it go up quickly no it's going to be deep deal oh she's going to pull it up from deep oh are you kidding me the three-pointer you're just thinking Long shot. Reach all over, all over the pass lane behind the back. Oh. for two. She clenches the fist on the way past. No one wants this more than if Danny Mulsi. She does not want that career to end today. Drop Shirazi has it. Double three is down the floor. She's going to get a look at Shirazi. Doesn't like what you see. Oh, <laughs> Stewart with the two of the pretty little pass from Shirazi. Tips it over three. And Maltzi with a real great read going up. Is blocked. 
Don't worry, Anthony Muncy. She's been blocked before in her career. The temptation is to go to Muncy every time down the floor, but others have to step up. And there, Johannes gets it inside to Mia. And that's kind of the little uh, why you would pay for a ticket to see Johannes. She's just exciting. Spain were surrounding Cambage. Here's Sanchez. Good. Look at that. Talk about contributions from the bench. Here we go. Whitcomb. A little shake and bake goes baseline. Puts it up. Put it on the highlight reel. Belgium's turn. Alamon this time delivering to Messerman. They're just exciting to watch. Putting this to score. Chu has it high, so. Shouting spins. Oh, oh, oh. oh! That was another highlight move. Welcome back inside the Superdome. We are in the Olympic Park in Sydney, Australia. It is halftime. And we are going to take a look at the top scores first for the visiting team, Mali. This is Sika Kone. She showed us a little bit of everything. Six points, eight rebounds, two assists, and truly an ability to create off an offensive rebound over and over again. Well, the thing about Kone is, is that she attracts so much attention. So while she may have only scored six points, the defense have to play on her. That's then opening it up for her teammates to perhaps get a, 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 you know, an open look from the perimeter. And on the other side of the court, it's number 31, Aika Irashta, that clearly had opened up the floodgates from three. She's got 14 points, four She's of four. She's been nice to watch from there. She's not overshooting. She's taking her opportunities. As you said, she's shooting the ball really well. And I'm sure she'll continue to do because that's what she's known for. She's a three-point specialist, and she is showing us why she has that tag beside her name. <laughs> I love it. Japan, the first team back on the court. In fact, earlier than anyone we've seen today at the six-minute mark, at halftime, what do you suspect that message was from Toru Asuka? Well, I think that other than the first few minutes of the game where they looked a bit tentative, weren't playing Japanese-style basketball, they've really settled into a nice rhythm. And to fo score 47 points by the half is, is a really good margin. They're shooting the three ball exceptionally well, 53%. Um, so they'd be really happy with that. and. Free throws, they've only gone to the to the line four times, one from four, so they wouldn't be happy with that. But, you know, that's their style of game. Drive it in, kick it out to the open shooters. They've taken care of the ball, uh, only seven turnovers, 13 assists. So I think overall, they'd be pretty happy with this. It's, it's nice to get this first game, get a run in, get everybody on the court, try out your systems and, um, you know, kick off a great, great campaign at this women, Women's Basketball World Cup. I, f I feel, Lori, you kind of touched on it. I, I feel there are so many boxes that coaches and players are trying to check off in this first game. How do you kind of weigh uh, the importance of each one of those? Because, yes, we are in a tournament that is lasting almost two weeks, right? We're in group play. 
We'll take a little breather on next Wednesday. And then we're going into, you know, single elimination contest. And one that this year is not set by your seating and your group play, That's but exactly rather right. a random draw. Exactly. So, so I think your mindset always is that number one priority is to win the game. So if you are in a position that you feel comfortable, so right now they're up by 18 points. And I'll tell you this, Despina, no coach ever feels comfortable. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the margin. So you want to make sure that you go for the win. And then it's about teachable moments. You know, what can you take? Are you lurking at your, your full court press? Are you looking at this out of bounds play? Are you looking at a three point play if you need it? So, so teachable moments, coaches, and looking at rotations. Um, who's gelling well together? Who can you put on the court? Who can you make as a, who's your defensive stopper? All those sorts of things. Um, when you're 18 points up at halftime, you have the luxury to maybe sit outside, think outside that, let's get a win box. And for Molly, I mean, there's a lot of pride to be on this floor, but they are competing and they are competing at a high level. And you got to think that Kone is going to show us a whole lot more here in the second half. Well, we've said it over and over. I like the way that they aren't taking a backward step. They're attacking the basket. They're getting to the foul line even more so than, than Japan. They've been there seven times shooting the ball at 86%. So why not go to the foul line? They're only shooting one from 11 from the three point line. So put it to the floor, put some pressure on the Japanese defenders. The thing about Molly is, and, and I love the fact that every tournament they go to, is a bonus for them. It's learning for these athletes what it's like to play at this highest level, what they need to do as a country to get better, to, to improve individually and a team. And it's just such a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for each and every one of them. And I almost feel like in the States, this would be a recruiting trail, uh, a recruiting tool, excuse me, for you to be on this level, it only lays a deeper foundation for, like you said, this program to keep building it's in its infancy well it is and and you know the fact that they've now sort of made a little bit of inroads in a few things and teams now know who molly is and and you know as as every coach will say you have to respect everybody and i respect the fact that molly is going out hard they're being competitive they're not looking they're not looking intimidated at all and they look like they're enjoying themselves out there which we've said again is a real positive for this group and this group this group b they're coining this the group of death because of these six teams, we're talking France, Serbia, Japan, Mali, Canada, and Australia. Only four will advance. Yeah, what a what what a name for the group, Group of Death. But it really is. There's some close games, and and that's only um, shown by a game that just finished at the other venue. Canada, 67, defeated Serbia, 60. So that's a really important first up win for Canada in this Group B phase. She's got six points, three rebounds, three rebounds. Japan's big front line sharing the work on the glass. And just a minute left here in this halftime. And if you're just joining us, I want to welcome you back. I'm Despina Barton. My partner, Lori Chizik, the former Australian assistant here for the national team. You're looking at number 37, Molly, taking on number eight, Japan, on the first day of the FIBA World Cup Championship Tournament. You may ask, what's on the line? Well, a lot, right? Not only is it gold medal, but the team that is victorious after day number nine of competition gets an automatic bid to the 2024 Paris Olympics. You've got the likes of Belgium, China, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Puerto Rico, Korea, USA, France, Serbia, Japan, Mali, Canada, and Australia. All here. And if you're at home right now, you see this QR code on the screen. Go ahead and tap that. You're going to want to download the World Cup app. Highlight stats, information, basically everything you cannot get from the game and more is included on that app. It's so great to get that background feel of what the players are doing 
off the court and some excitement and get to know them a little bit better. And uh, it's a great way to, um, to go about learning about different players. And you're looking at Coach Jack King Trizuela there. And that is the whistle, friends. The third quarter has begun. That starting lineup back on the floor for Japan. They did a hot change early in the first quarter. And using all of the clock, Takata drawn some contact. Molly keeps the ball. That was like pack rebounding. There was four <laughs> of them in there. <laughs> Around the horn they go, looking for what they want. Haidar, Ra, too much on that pass. So I think you can give credit to Japan for that, that turnover. They were really up and in defensively and, and Taking Molly out of anything that they wanted to do gave them zero options of easy passes. Yamamoto right at you, miss on the left. Oh, that was a good little change of speed by Yamamoto. Just wasn't able to finish. Dara to Kuruma. Looking for options. Baseline hook, a miss. Drops into Okoye's hands. Akaho, no one's paying attention. She gets it. Easy two points for Akaho. And that's one thing you never want to happen. If you're going to foul a player in the act of shooting, make sure that they don't make the basket. Now we're seeing an and one chance for a three point play from Akaho. And that pushes the lead out to 21 for Japan. A turnover, but not before Toto stepped out of bounds. Oh, Molly got out of jail on that one. It's that full court pressure that they haven't been able to hand really, handle really consistently this game. Kick out shot is good. That's a nice way to rebound Enjai with the three ball. Yamamoto spotted up baseline. A miss. Rebounds good. Japan gets another shot. Steps right up. Okoye! Okoye is such a calm player. She just has her game face on all the time. Looks really composed when she's playing out there. Takata just getting her hand in the passing lane, just being disruptive. Molly now need to take it from the sideline. Quick inbound, seven sec seconds on the shot clock. Kone takes the deep two. And Yamamoto with the rebound. Quick ball movement. Try to hit Okoye on the other wing. Maoli. Tosses back out. Who's there setting up in the corner? Oh, Yamamoto wanted that one. She keeps moving all along that baseline. Block Yamamoto. She's like the Energizer Bunny. She is. She was part of the 3x3 Olympic team for Japan. So not a part of that silver medalist squad. But man, definitely plays basketball at the highest level. Shot looks good for Toto. Yes, it does. The thing is with those dribble handoffs that we just saw Japan do, you can never go under the, any of those screens or handoffs. They're just too good, too potent from the three-point line. And if they see you go under, they are going to stop and prop and shoot. Wow. 
because that's what happens if you don't. That's where the, the highly skilled teams and players, they read what the defense is giving you and they try and, you know, have counter moves or read that the, going one way or the other. And, and that's what they do. They're able to score in many, many different ways. Maoli with the board. Harashtha, who had the hot hand in the first half, gets it to Koye. Off rim. It feels like there's been a concerted effort here to get Okoye activated. Kone on the other end with a traveling call, a turnover against Sika Kone. Substitution for Mali. Number 11, Kamate Elizabeth Dabu. Well, Okoye is shooting the ball, the three point ball, at 50% right now. And she's able to use her body. She can create mismatches. She's out at the three-point line. Nice defense by Molly. Deep three is good. And that's the exact way Molly want to play if they can. They don't want to get, as I mentioned earlier, into a quarter court. They don't have that many offensive actions. So to be able to run in transition, but what a nice give and go. Takata, the veteran, the 33-year-old captain on the finishing end for Japan. Dabu to Kone. Cutter comes through. And back-to-back -back threes for Molly, this time from Enjai. There you go. I like the fact that they're confident to shoot that ball. A foul on the block going against Molly. Great job, Takata, just holding her seal inside. She had really good position right under the basket, calling for the ball. That's what you want to do. Molly really didn't have any opportunity to do anything other than foul. How great is it to make subs and have Miyazaki come on, Takashi come on? You do not lose a thing. To me, Japan's a lot of like, a lot alike. Wow, let me use my words here, Lori. A lot like USA, minus the height. They could do full lineup changes and it would be very difficult to see any kind of differential in the talent. They've got such a wide skill range level and, and what they're able to do. And they play so well together. Tokashiki oh, rolls out. We're running with Gendega. All right, Kone, you got the baseline. What are you going to do? Back him down, back him down. A foul delivered by Tokashiki. Personal foul. Assist to number 10, Tokashiki Ramos. We have to remember that Kone is only 20 years old. You know, she's the mainstay of this Mali team and she's 20. So she's got a big, bright future ahead of her. You have me flashbacking to when I was 20, <laughs> Lori. Woo. You played just like Kone? Uh, exactly. <laughs> All five foot seven of me. <laughs> Miyazaki will draw it herself. She felt it, why not? It goes down and the lead keeps going up. A foul here will slow this game down. Karumba was the shooter, but this foul was away from the ball. Good, 
Coach Toro has really rotated his players well. Other than a, a one or two, they've all played very even minutes, but what a great drive. Kone just missing the finish. Open look, baseline, lefty, yes, Hrashta. It's not often many of these Japanese players, if they are left wide open at that three-point line, that they're going to miss that opportunity to take that shot and make that shot. Arashita, 17 points today. Plenty of time. The assists for Japan are up to 18 right now, which shows just sort of the, the team basketball they're playing, the, the way they're moving the ball and hitting their open player and finding the players. And Dega kicks out, shot on the wing, no good. Who's waiting? We get an easy bunny by Bilar Yara. Spotting up, Japan trying to keep the trend going. A miss though by B Miyazawa. Dabu, and Diego. Kone with the fake, spins into trouble. Not a strip, we'll take a jump ball here. It stays with, with Mali. You can see that anytime Kone gets a ball uh, inside that three-point line, she's almost being doubled every single time, making her make a decision. Who are you gonna throw it out to? Substitutions for Japan, number 14. And Japan are smart. Uh, Mali haven't shot the three ball well, so they're really protecting the paint. NJ with the ball. Three seconds of shot clock. Got to get something up. Going to run out. Another turnover here for Mali. They've got 11 here today. Relatively clean game, actually, when you look at Japan, too, with eight. So under 20. And not a lot of fouls have been called either way. I like how the referees are letting them play. Akoye. Another rebound by Kone. Oh, nearly a backcourt situation. <laughs> it was. Hold your breath. <laughs> we both sort of breathed in <laughs> <laughs> right in front of us. Kone with a fake, shakes one defender. And there's that collapsing D, three defenders on her that time. And that's something she'll learn as she matures and, and, and gets more experienced in the, in the game is sometimes you have to make a decision pretty quickly. So put it on the floor knowing traps are coming, kick it out straight away, repost up. And she'll learn all that. Experience playing in a tournament like this will be so good for somebody like Kone. Kandega calls the play out here at midcourt. She's covered by Yasama. Kick out. Enjai. And recovered by Akaho. Not before a foul is delivered. A minute 47 here in the third quarter. If I've done my calculations correctly, Molly are only down this quarter by six points. They, they've, they've sort of held firm with them. A miss there by Yoshida. Matted herself with that open look. And so Yasama will take the ball out for the inbound after the foul. Takata, the captain, hands it back. Down low, Maui 
Spin, no, a miss. Naja. And now we're going up and down, friends. A little bit messy right now from both teams. Dabu. Kone. Another offensive board. Right. Hey, listen, you get two for one. You get the board and the point. <laughs> That's right. Right place at the right time. Under a minute to go here in the third. If you're just joining us here, it's day number one of the FIBA World Cup Championships. We're in group play. You're looking at group B on the floor right now. That was so great of Takata. Just saw that her player left, had turned her head, had no idea where she was, had lost vision. Just snuck under the basket there to uh, try and get that reverse layup in. That's experience. And then she hits the free throw. She is the oldest player on this Japanese roster and is the captain. Two for two, Takada Machi. And Japan relentless with their defense. They're not letting up no matter what's on the scoreboard. Kone. Going up against a Kaho, drawing three white jerseys, open look, goes in from Balayara. And if she can be used as a decoy, Kone, to draw some defenders and then be able to execute the pass out to her teammates who can shoot and score, well, that's as good as scoring yourself, which is exactly what she did that last play. <laughs> Final play here, third quarter. Skip pass, we're moving around. Maui with the rock. Backing down her defender's open look from Akaho. Does she get it? No. Man, Japan has been wanting that buzzer beater. They'll have to settle for a 22-point lead here after three quarters instead. It's Japan 66, Mali 44. And that's three-quarter time. Japan 66, Mali 44. So at this point, Lori, how does the game shift knowing that there's a lot of group play ahead of both of these teams? Well, I think for Japan, you keep rotating the players like you have already done so. So right now, the, the Stephanie Mawali and Himawari, they've both played 16 minutes. So, and Takata 16 minutes. So that's, that's relatively good. You can see that he's using everybody and, and, and playing them. And so I think he'll continue to do that. Um, it's a good way to get runs in the legs. And, and for, for Mali, well, they need to just keep doing what they're doing. They, they lost that quarter by six points. So again, they they're keep fighting. They, they want to keep getting better. So see what combinations work. That last play we saw where uh, Kone was triple teamed and the way she kicked it out, that's the sort of learning experience. That's what they'll, they'll bring from this. And hopefully each quarter will just get a little bit better. You saw a little light there by Jabu. But it's really hard, or it's been hard for this team, Mali, to find some offense. Well, Mali, they, they were one, uh, one made free throw to start that quarter and made three that quarter. So that'll give them some confidence. And it's good to see that they're still shooting it if they feel they can make it. High fives all around as we get started with the final quarter of the day. If you're just joining us here inside, we are inside the Kudos Bank Arena, also known as the Superdome, in the middle of Sydney Olympic Park. I'm Justina Barton. My partner, Lori Chizik, the former Australian assistant coach. And you're looking at Japan and Mali here at center court.
speed oh. to Akaho. They waited a very oh. long time for that. Patience paying off. Oh, Tokoshki just backing down, backing down, looking ominous. But really, she was looking for her slashing teammate in there in Akaho. And now she finds herself at the line. Really good team chemistry between those two in that play. A chance here to add one more and complete the three-point play. Akaho, the six-foot, 24-year-old, does just that. Akaho with 12 points for Japan. Enjoy doing a good job of bringing the ball up the court under immense pressure from Yamamoto. Dembele, couple extra steps, but not before a whistle is called. She's gonna head to the free throw line. A push, that looks from Toto. Substitutions for Mali. Checking in number one, Kanku Kulebuli. We see Kula Billy uh, check in, and, and um, again, another, another Mali player that is long, athletic, can run. And for this Mali squad, this is their second appearance in the World Cup. The last was in 2010, so you're talking 12 years ago. And they are trying to leave a mark and build up their federation. Dunbelly baseline. Working around the horn. Hydara spins, spits it out. Baseline Dunbelly. A good take. Kone trying to finish. I think if we count up all the second chance yeah. shots, and if they would have gone down, this game would look very different. Because they really have had the positioning down in the paint as Akaho might have gotten a, a push to the belly. Yeah, she was just trying to get her feet across to that uh, sideline to cut her player off. Kulibeli. Okay. <laughs> Molly kicking it out. Corne. Oh, miss. And Japan will keep running. Yamamoto still pushing the ball at this late stage in the game. And I'm sure that's instruction from the coach because you want to be able to play for four full quarters, the style of game that you're used to. So that's pushing the ball, attacking it for Japan, kicking it out to your open shooters, or taking early threes in transition. They don't want to go away from that. And the defensive pressure stays with Molly. Baseline takes, stripped away. Good hands by Enjai. She gets it right back. Kulibeli? No. But guess who's in there for the rebound? <laughs> Kone. Hidara had a good look. Ball falls right into the hands yes. of Molly again. And who finishes it? Nijay, the woman who started the offensive series. Toto liked what she saw and well, you literally liked what she saw in the fact that her defender went under that screen, left her wide open. That's what she liked to see, and that's why she shot the ball and made that. It's almost like you turn a switch. Like, as soon as that happens, 
Okay, I'm gonna take this shot. Absolutely, that's good recognition of what the defense is giving you. And if you're a three-point shooting team and, and they go under those screens, that is automatic. Automatic. Another look. Assistant number 14, <laughs> A little feistiness, too, after the play. <laughs> All right, Mowley comes back in. Japan have three players currently in double figures right now. Whereas Molly only have the one in Enjoy. Miyazaki's got the biggest smile as she runs this offense. The motion. Oh, Toto coughs it up. And Dega calling out the offense. Nice quick step. And Dega, Kone follows. Seven seconds. They got to get moving. Hydaira finds a lane. Too hard. She'll stay with it. Who touched it last? Japan. Somali staying alive. And fresh 14 seconds on the shot clock. So Mali have 17 offensive rebounds. To me, that says offensive rebounding is not hard. It's a, it's a mental thing. You have to go at it. You have to want to get your feet in the paint and try and go after those shots. So they've done a great job of trying to create second chance opportunities for themselves. They just haven't been able to execute those second chance, those putbacks. By the time Gandega gets it off in time and will stay on this side of the court. Lead out to 25. And an offensive foul going to be called against Kulibeli. Yes, uh, Stephanie Mawali did a great job of blocking her out. And Kulibeli just tried to go over her back to secure that rebound. But really good blocking out by Japan's Mawali. Okoye wasn't successful out on the wing the last few attempts, so try something new. Kone, hands all over it. Takata stealing, stealing two on from one, a baby. Two on one situation. Oh, oh, and a block. We see you, Dembele. And you, you power go. that up with the three. Cooley Belly on the other end. Nice little string of events. Miyazaki again under the screen. This one falls flat to the right. Hidara. Well, we are ball. still trying to push the ball to try and get maybe an earlier shot and not have to go through, you know, some offensive movements. And Koulibaly gets tripped up. Moali running all alone. <laughs> Kone was riding her hip, but... Wow, she just bounced do. up there like it was a trampoline. <laughs> Four and a half to play. The lane was wide open for Dembele. Dembele, she looked athletic on that drive. And there we see... Kowali again running the floor. Such a good finish. And Dega slowing the tempo. Hulu Belly pulls it up herself. Nothing in striking distance there. Substitutions 
You could just see the coach, uh, Japanese coach Toro, just congratulating Mowali and the effort that she's been putting in in this last quarter. Miyazaki, the feed. From the needle to the direct connector, Koye. Japan showing all different facets of their offense. Well, Koye there did her work early. She she got position, she held her position, and then demanded the ball. And, and, and in the end, it was a, a relatively easy finish. Miyazaki, is anybody going to come guard me? What's <laughs> going on? Flashing there with Sangari. You can see again in that replay how when Kone gets it inside, she attracts at least two or three defenders. I mean, the scout was pretty clear. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Kone with just nine points now after that made free throw. 14 rebounds, eight of them offensive. Two from two. So she goes ahead and hits that double-double mark with that free throw. Meanwhile, defense falls asleep as Yasama had the open lane. Trap comes. And walking follows. Indega had nowhere to go. That is the ideal place to set a trap on the basketball court. At a sideline, just over the halfway mark. It's like having two extra defenders on there. She had nowhere to go. Excellent defense by Japan. Osama did the exact same thing. We saw her do it on the right. She's like, OK, you won't step up on the left. I'm just going to have a field day and stack the, the, the book here. Get past the Sangari. She'll pull up. Rush the one, one more three ball under two to play here. That was a rare miss. Too much time, too much space, maybe. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yasama. Okay, the hard way. Feeling a bit of contact there. I love the side eye. She glances. Everybody goes right past her. Now I'm going to pull up the J. What a soldier, too, to take that contact. And look at Japan still out pressing full court. Minute and a half left in this game, and, and they still want to get some things done. Dembele trying to create. Great defense from Japan, cutting off those driving lanes for Mali. Toro to Miyazawa. And everybody hitting their steps. <laughs> to think this is just day number one of the FIBA World Cup Championship Tournament. We're in Group B play. Japan doing what we thought they would do as coming in as the number eight team in the world. Mali, the African nation, making just their second ever FIBA World Cup Tournament appearance. High, low, you call it. Takashiki. Just a nice 
A nice slip of the screen, wide open, great pass from her teammate. You have to remember that even though Japan's currently ranked eighth, they are the, the current silver medalists from the Olympics and have been playing some great basketball. They have won the Asia Cup five times in a row. And you're right, they have four members off that Olympic silver team here in Sydney, Australia. So big core still intact. 23 seconds left on the game clock. A block to add to the column for Takashki. Somebody like Takashki makes the block look so easy, but it's not. It's the timing. It's making sure that you've got the right distance and that you don't foul them in the process. <laughs> he smiles, there's the ball. Rolled out of bounds, last touch by Hirashita. 15 seconds. Traor A, off her mark. I think Japan will just walk the ball up the floor for the end of this very entertaining game. No, they're gonna draw, they're gonna push it. What are you talking about, Lori? They got three seconds on the clock. They're going to make the most out of it. Turn around, hook shot. <laughs> okay, Yasama throwing it up. High fives all around for Team Japan. Their opening match cuts a streak. They now have won their first debut game in the tournament. They had not done that since 1979. So congratulations to Japan. The final score, Japan 89, Mali 56, a 33-point victory for Japan. They must have heard you talking at the beginning of the uh, broadcast, Espina, and saying about uh, not having won that first game, but that is a really good win for Japan. It's a solid win for Japan. They played a lot of their players. They got through their stuff. They um, they looked impressive. And, and just to have that run in your legs, get that first game out of the way, uh, will mean a lot for them. And it's a big stage. It's only going to get bigger as we work through this tournament. Fans coming out in the droves. And there's just so much basketball in front of us as 12 of the world's best basketball teams are here competing for gold. For you, your biggest takeaways is these two teams move forward in group play. Well, you know, Molly's, to be honest, Molly's not expected to win a game. But if they can be competitive and get better each game that they step out on the court, that's a win for them. You know, they'll, they'll have some closer games than this, but as long as they keep getting better, then that's success as far as I'm concerned. And I think they really gave it to um, Japan, especially initially. They did not, as we expected, take a backward step coming out. And we're going to give you another look at the best plays of the second half. We did see some glimpses of greatness from both sides from the three-point line. That shot being powered up by Dabu. Well, and I think um, Molly certainly took a few more threes and made a few more threes that second half. And Japan had a field day. Well, folks, that concludes the day session of day one here at the FIBA Women's World Cup. Thank you so much for coming along. We appreciate your support. It's so good to see the, the ball and player movement um, of both these teams, but especially Japan. That little pocket pass from Hiroshoti, that, that just, uh, to me, epitomizes what, what Japan is about. They look for each other. They're highly skilled. They've got great court vision. Um, she has, Taka Kash, Kashki has really high basketball IQ, and it was certainly present on the court. But another three-point shot from Toto. Toto, to me, came out of nowhere in that um, second half and ended up with 14 points. Yeah, she was denoted as a rising star. 
just 21 years old. I think for a lot of these nations, we are starting to see that core really take shape of leadership. And it's going to be hard to surprise people as we go on throughout the tournament. Maoli all over the place today for Japan. Japan had a four player score in double figures, so that's hard to defend when that's the case. And led by uh, uh, Hirashita with 17 points. Laying everything on the line here at the FIBA World Cup Championship Tournament. But look here at day one results, right? Canada, Japan, all getting W's. And tonight, the nightcap, Australia, the host nation, taking on France. I look at Group A. It was Puerto Rico, USA, successful. And we'll see Korea and China. So... From my partner, Lori Chizik, I'm Despina Barton. We are saying so long from Kudos Bank Arena. It is Japan who is victorious, 89-56. Good night.